This has been on the list of things to fix for about a year. And it belongs to a friend of mine I do work for. And um, I wasn't even going to bother to make a video on it because I figured it would probably just need some electrolytic capacitors and it would fire right back up. But that's not the case as usual for me. So um, <clears throat> I've been graciously assisted by Max Arcade on working on this thing because uh, I don't know hardly anything about video games. I've never played them. I've never owned one. I uh, don't know anything about them except the electronics I can figure out. So we're dealing, we were dealing with originally two problems. The main one was no high voltage to the screen. And these are not exactly like a regular television. These are a vector screen and they're a little different. I'm learning how they work. Uh, the other one was the thing would just beep when you pressed any button and there's a there's a button there's a switch down here and it's actually kind of well hidden it's back it's right there see it right there and this thing puts it into test mode and I probably would have never found this if it was not for Max Arcade so the switch is up is test mode, down is it, 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 in the middle is game run. So I got that in the right position and now when you plug it in it acts like it's working. And now I was working on the high voltage. So let's take a look at that. Okay, this box here is the high voltage generator. And this, again, like a television, this is not like a horizontal output where the frequency is in, in sync with the incoming signal. That This thing doesn't work like that. So I initially saw this. In fact, what's interesting is this is a one transistor high voltage generator. It's just a feedback through the, um, the flyback. So when I initially saw this, I thought, oh, you know, look at these four old electrolytics. I'm sure one of those is bad. But let me test them just in case before I check them. Tested them all. They were all good. Then this thing fell apart. This is the high voltage rectifier diode. And it was simply in here. Um... And the way this thing works is, I don't know if the camera will show it, but down inside there was a spring. And on this side was a spring. And you can see how baked out this is. This is totally baked out. And what they had here with the diode was they had the leads just bent over and then in there pressing up against the spring. Well, the lead on this side is completely gone. This is the side that was in here. So it's probably arcing. That's why this is all melted and burnt. So the question is how to replace this. Well, today I'm going to do a really dangerous crude experiment. These are, and the reason why I want to do an experiment is solid state stuff is not like tube stuff. This can't arc and burn. It'll burn up the transistor or maybe the flyback. So these are microwave oven diodes and they're rated at about 12 kilovolts. This is rated at 22 kilovolts. So I put two of them in series. I don't know if it's valid or not. It can't be any worse than what was going on here. I can buy a 30 kilovolt replacement diode. The initial thought was, well, I could maybe use a color TV focus rectifier or something like that. Those are selenium stacks, so the resistance is a, the internal resistance is a little bit different. So let's stick this thing together and stick this contraption in here 
and just try and hold it away from everything and see if we get high voltage. If we get high voltage, then I'll go on and order the diode and I'll have to figure out how to make something like this. The other thing I, about the TV focus rectifiers, those are usually under five kilovolts, the focus voltage, so I don't know if that would work. Okay, this is a this is just a scrapped out chassis out of a monitor or something. Now theoretically we would have good diodes inside the flyback here, but the problem is getting to them. They, they're all potted in there real good. I guess I could try and tear it apart, but I don't know. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this lead off here so I can, uh, I can use this to test our subject. Okay, the chassis is plugged in there. It's grounded both with a clip lead and um, and it's wedged in the chassis there. I got the two microwave oven diodes. Everything is out in the middle, clear of everything. We're gonna power this up and see what happens. Now this thing runs at 25 kilohertz, so we won't really hear it squealing and I just hope those diodes are fast enough. Ooh, I hear high voltage. The CRT is not lit at all though. I wonder if the CRT is open. Well, there's 12 kilovolts. That's well under what it's supposed to be, but that should be enough to make a image. And I don't see the CRT glowing at all. So I measured this before and there was no high voltage. I measured it with this thing. So um, I know for a fact there was no high voltage. Um, let me see. You can smell it too. So why is the CRT not glowing? Yeah, this is a, another one of those mystery situations. I checked the brown and black wires there and it was one point, uh, 2.5 ohms and then I checked it down here where the brown and black go into the connector right there and I'm getting 6.8 volts. So why is this thing not lighting up? What, what am I missing here? Uh, do I have a bad socket or something? Hey, can you see what's wrong there? Somebody bent the pin so that the pin is going into the key slot, not the, the actual pin on the CRT socket. Uh, I couldn't see that. It's so dark in here. That's what I was basically. But anyway, yeah, someone else worked on this before me, so there you go. And now we have CRT illumination, so let me unplug it and, and plug this contraption back in and fire it up and see what happens. Well, Okay, we've obviously got some crack solders on the bottom of this, which I think uh, 
Max Arcade mentioned or on that board because if I come around here and I finger that thing, let me see if I can, we get, that's not going to do it now because the camera's rolling, but Come on, damn it. It was just, I just almost had it working. Anyway, let me play with this. Okay, I do not know what the hell this is, but obviously there's no vertical deflection <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at oh man <laughs> okay, does not look right. All right, I'm going to um, pull that board out and look at the solders on the bottom of that thing. And I don't know if this is gonna show on the camera, but yes, these solders are cracked. Can you see that? They're all bad. I need to go through this whole board. Guess I could reflow this real quick and slap it in and see what it does. You know, this works a little bit like an old school oscilloscope with the X and Y deflection. All right, I completely went over and reflowed all of these headers. Every one of them was completely cracked. When I say headers, I mean these. Every one of them was completely cracked beyond belief. Um, I'm surprised it worked at all. So, And then I went over the whole board with a good magnifying glass and it looks good, so I'll slap it back in. We'll see if it works. Okay, this time it worked, but I had an incredibly bright dot right in the middle and it almost looks like there's some screen burn there. So I'm not gonna continue with that. I gotta figure out what that is. So I started reading about the spot killer circuit and I was just looking at this with a magnifying glass and these are tantalum capacitors. But then I noticed this capacitor here is not even soldered in. And if you look at the bottom of it here, it's totally smooth. Like it never was soldered in from the factory. That's C702. And this is the X channel, and this is C702, right? Uh, I guess that wouldn't have much to do with the spot killer. I don't know. I don't get this. Because this down here... Let me see, where is it? This is the spot killer. Is right here. One thing I forgot to add is you got a brightness and contrast. That pot right there, that's your brightness. And the green one back there, it's right there. That's your contrast. What you do is you put it in test mode and you adjust the little grayscale bar in the middle. You know, you, you don't want it so bright that you get those trace lines where it's tracing all over the screen. You can put it in, um, test mode and then adjust your your grayscale right here I believe that's what that's for anyway okay I think I'm getting closer I know this looks dark on the screen here I'm, but um, I got rid, the, rid of the dot that was um, some whiskers on the bottom of the circuit board um, It's kind of interesting to me that this does not come all the way, it doesn't fill the screen. You can see there's a border here. I, 
I don't know, this is kind of weird. So the fire button doesn't do anything. This... I mean, I, I guess the way this thing works is you point this little thing and then you press fire and it squirts out a thing and blows up the little thing, but... Um, the fire button isn't doing anything at all. So, got to stay away from that. Uh, I looked at it up here. It looks good. I checked this connector. This, what a problem child this thing is. When I'm in test mode here, you can see it's not filling the screen. Um, and so this one's not doing anything. Okay, I think I've got this figured out. The ground wire here is broken off that goes over to this one, so I'll just fix that real quick. Okay, we got game now. It, it's just, it's too bad that it's not filling the screen. I think it's supposed to fill the screen anyway. I can't, I can't do this with one hand. Anyway, we're getting there. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this thing again, thanks to Max Arcade. That guy really knows this stuff. Um, basically, the adjustment for the size are these pots right here. So it's obvious to me, somebody just turned everything trying to get it to work, you know? So let's go. Probably get a copyright tag here. I'm gonna, I'll come back to this. I got it a little bit too big. Audio up. I don't know where the adjustment is. So I don't know if that's power. It doesn't. Did it do it again? Mm-hmm. It's like resetting. It's going back to the beginning of the game. Maybe it's a capacitor, huh? <laughs> Actually, the power looks very good on this. You got another customer. This thing is on hard, isn't it? Like difficult mode. This is on eat your quarter mode. I don't know. It, it's the, it, okay. Start it and go. So there you go, restarted. Yeah, I don't there like, I know, it could be the high voltage but hey, that's floating great, around. Man. You got it, you know, you got it working again. Okay, this is the new diode. I got these off eBay. They were, figured I could use them for TVs. I was working on, they're rated at 30 kilovolts at five milliamps which should be more than enough for this. This thing is 15 milli, 15 kilovolts at, I don't know, maybe a milliamp, but that's still, what, 15 watts? That's quite a bit. Uh, this is the original one. I can actually still get this, but I didn't realize it till after I ordered these. And this is a microwave oven dialed. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit this in there then I'm going to slip, slip one of these boots over it. These boots are silicone high voltage boots out of a rear projection color set. Um, and I'll fill it with silicone. So we'll take a look when it's done. All right, there's the finished product. So I just hope this wire isn't too short now. I have to put it back together once it dries and see how it works. Okay, now it's doing something interesting. It's arcing. Looks like in the CRT socket and there, and I'm not sure enough of that. All right, let's check the high voltage on this. I'm going to 
plug it in and see where we're at. Um, this meter is a little bit low, a few kilovolts low, so I'm going to adjust it for say about 13, it's supposed to be 15. And I don't know what the hell is going on here. That that's not high. I don't get it. Why is this why is this doing this? Is the CRT internally shorted? Adjusting it doesn't even do anything. See, I can see it arcing inside the CRT here. I don't get this. I'm not overvolting it. So if I adjust the high voltage up, of course the, the, the screen pulls down to where it should be. Why is this not? Great, so I've been doing everything in manual focus. So if I adjust the high voltage up, it starts arcing, but the screen size gets down. Yeah, you can see it arcing inside the CRT. I don't get it and it stops. I'm a little bit baffled why this is doing this. It didn't do it one time when I had the microwave oven diodes in it. Uh, the high voltage is not excessively high or anything. I don't know if there's a little bit of air leaking into the CRT. Um, I took it all apart down here and cleaned everything and it's still doing it. So I'm, I think maybe I'll try and get the uh, right diode for it, but I can't see, or I'll go back to the microwave oven diodes, but I can't see how that is affecting it. 15 kilovolts DC is 15 kilovolts DC. So I'm a bit of a loss here. If the CRT is arcing out inside, I don't know what's going on with this. I'm back to the microwave oven diodes um, and it has not arced. It's been on 20 minutes and it has not arced. So I, I'm, I am completely baffled at how a, uh, how a diode can cause it to arc or not. Um, but I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to order the proper diode. That's all I'm going to do. It still glitches occasionally. Let's see if we can get it to do it. And resets. The first thing I got to do is I got to get the right diode in there and try and get the the stray electrons that are floating out of this thing that's hissing. You know, you can smell the ozone from the the corona. So, all right, back back to the uh, back to eBay. Okay, back to the video game. I ordered the right diode off of eBay. I think they were like ten dollars a piece and this is the right diode and high voltage rectifier and it was in the set or in the game running for about eight hours yesterday and there was no arcing and it worked perfect so this is the right diode this is the 30 kilovolt 5 milliamp diode and these are the microwave oven diodes microwave oven diodes work this diode 
did not work. It caused all kinds of arcing and all of that, and I cannot explain that. This is the right diode. We're going to go ahead and install that. I'm just going to use these rubber caps. Um, these rubber caps are out of a big screen TV I harvested off the side of the road. So let's put it together and fire it up and be done with it. Okay, I just wanted to show the diode is installed. And there's the high voltage cap. Are we in manual focus again? No, that looks okay. Let's put it back together. Okay, I had to go into manual focus with the camera. And um, that's interesting how some of the comets actually have trails behind them. That's kind of cool. I wonder if that's just held in the phosphor since I got the lights off. But anyway, uh, it's rock solid. It's working good. I noticed this little glitchy thing that it does, and again, I can't play this thing with one hand, and I can't really play it at all because... I should have brought a tripod, but anyway. It's interesting, those, those trails are not nearly... I can barely, barely see them, but on the... On the camera, the trails really, really lag. I'm just doing this with one hand. So I let it run all day yesterday and I've noticed that glitchy thing has really gone away. So I think we can, I think we can call this a wrap, I really do. All the buttons work, everything works.